us pray. Our Father and our God, we bless you. We thank you for life. We don't take life for granted. You are a faithful God, the Almighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Ancient of Days. We worship you. We exalt you. We say, have your way, Lord. As we go into this word, I hide myself behind you. Take the stage, Lord, and have your way. Let it be your voice that men and women will hear this morning. Let my voice disappear. And I pray, Lord, that if there's anybody in our midst who has not known you, today will be their day of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, this morning the Lord has given us a word in the eye of the storm. In the eye of the storm. Sometimes we face storms unexpectedly. Sometimes things go wrong and everything just goes topsy-turvy in our lives. Jesus is in our boat, so we expect that things should remain calm. But suddenly, everything turns upside down. And we find ourselves in the eye of the storm. We are bewildered, we are surprised, we are troubled. We want to look at that situation this morning. And I want us to look very quickly at Mark chapter 6 from 45 to 51. Mark chapter 6 from 45 to 51. And straight away he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side, before unto Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw them toiling in rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed them. But when they saw him walking upon the sea, they supposed that it was a spirit, and they cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and saith unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure, and they wondered. Brethren, Jesus had been ministering to the multitudes, and then in the evening he said to the disciples, Let's go to the other side. But he sent them ahead first in the boat. And later, he was to join them. And so they got into the boat and they went to the other side. It was Jesus who gave them the instructions. So they obeyed. He said to them, let us go to the other side. But he said, you go first. And so they obeyed. Naturally, they were not expecting a, a storm. They thought that the boat ride to the other side would be like a walk in the park. Brethren, it wasn't. Suddenly, they were fighting with the wind, afraid for their lives, toiling as they rode because the winds were contrary and they made no progress. It looked like their lives were going to be lost. And as they toiled, brethren, it meant that the more effort they put, the more hard work they put, there was no progress with the boat because the winds were contrary, blowing in the opposite direction. The storm took them unawares. They were troubled, they were bewildered, they were distressed. They were not sure whether they would get to the other side safely. Jesus had sent them into the storm. Are you in a storm this morning and wondering why God allows you to go through some storms? This morning he has sent me to tell you, hold on to the Lord who sent you into the storm. The same God who sent you into the storm will bring you out of it. And it's important for you to know 
that even though you are in the storm, his plans for you, they are for good and not for evil. He may have sent you into the storm, but he has his reasons. And he will not send you into the storm to perish in the storm. He sends you into the storm to go through the storm to the other side, and you will get to the other side. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Brethren, Jesus can send you into a storm, not because he wants to harm you, but because the route to your next destination is through a storm. He is willing and able to see his children through the storm. The fact that you hit a storm when you start a particular project does not necessarily mean that the Lord did not lead you. And the presence of a storm in your life does not always mean you have done something wrong. It may just be that it is a compulsory stop before the next destination. Jesus sent the disciples to the other side, even though he knew that they would have to ride through the storm. However, he saw them through to the other side. He will see you through whatever storm you are going through in the name of Jesus. If you recall, Joseph went through a storm. He went through several storms, but he made it to the other side. Brethren, you may be going through a storm this morning, but I stand here to tell you, to encourage you that no matter what storm you have hit, no matter how suddenly it has started, as suddenly as it started, it will stop in the name of Jesus because Jesus will arise on your behalf this morning. The next point is that Jesus did not leave them alone in the storm. He did not leave them alone. He sent them into the storm. But if you recall in that story, he came and he met them. He looked. He saw that they were struggling and he went over to help them. He will not abandon you in that storm you are going through. He will meet you in that storm. John 14, 18 in the New Living Trans Translation says, No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. The same scripture in the Amplified Version says, I will not leave you as or orphans, comfortless, desolate, bereaved, fallen, helpless. I will come to you. So the Lord is saying to somebody this morning, I will not leave you alone in that storm. I will come to you. I will come and help you. But one thing to note, though, is verse 48 tells us that he saw them toiling, but he still waited until the fourth watch, which is about 3 a.m. Just before dawn was when he went to help them. Brethren, sometimes Jesus may tarry before he speaks to you in the storm, but he will come through. Sometimes he may not act or speak quickly. And you may wonder if he sees. You may wonder if he knows. But he will come and he will not be late. Somebody here is going through a storm and they are wondering why the Lord has not spoken. But the Lord says to tell you he has been speaking, but you actually have not heard because the storm has overwhelmed you. And that is all you see and hear. He says you should come quietly before him and listen for his voice. You will hear him speak to you. He will quiet you with his love. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Brethren, perhaps you are in a storm. Expect him to meet you in that storm. Maybe you are in the eye of the storm right now and you are wondering, Lord, can't you see I'm going through this storm? Perhaps like the disciples, you are wondering, will I get to the end of this storm? Yes, you will get through. And the storm will not drown you in the name of Jesus. The third point is that he will calm the storm. Let's look very quickly at another story where Jesus was in a storm. It's in the book of Mark and we'll just read from uh, Chapter 4, 35 to 41, and I read in the New Living Translation. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and they started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. 
The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're about to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why were you afraid? Do you have no faith still? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. Brethren, Jesus was in the boat with the disciples, and yet they hit a storm. Remember, we said a few minutes ago that the fact that he's in the boat with you does not mean you will not hit a storm. The fact that you started a project with the Lord's leading does not mean you will not hit a storm. But what it means is that he will see you through that storm. That storm will not kill you. That storm will not fail you. He will see you through. He was asleep with a cushion at his head. The disciples were petrified because the Bible tells us that the water was filling the boat. They shouted to Jesus, don't you care that we're about to drown? You know, sometimes we are like that. We're in a storm and we're thinking, Lord, don't you care? Can't you see what I'm going through? But Jesus woke up and he spoke to the storm and he commanded it to be still. Are you going through a storm this morning, wondering why it's happening to you? Jesus will calm your storm. No matter how severe the storm, he is higher and greater than the storm you are going through. The storm will not keep him away. He will arise and help you. He is greater than the storm. Brethren, over the past 10 days to 14 days, I entered into a storm suddenly and unexpectedly. And like one or two other people, probably, I was also wondering why. But the Lord saw me through that storm without any adverse effects. Brethren, even as he calmed my storm, he will calm your storm in the name of Jesus. Psalm 107.29 says he calms the storm so that its waves are still. Psalm 93 verses 3 to 4 say the floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. But the Lord on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. I don't know what storm you are going through. But the Lord is saying he will calm that storm. He's in that boat with you. He will calm the storm. The fourth point is that God may use the storm to hide you from danger. God hid Elijah in the midst of the storm. First Kings, that story is in First Kings 17, but I will just read First Kings 17, 1 to 4. This is the story of Elijah. And Elijah the Tishbite, one of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here, and turn eastward, and hide by the brook Cherish, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you will drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Brethren, you can read that full story at home. In this instance, Elijah had, Israel had been in, they had gone into idolatry, serious idolatry with the bells in the land. And Elijah decreed, because of the idolatry, he decreed that there will be no rain in the land for three years. Ha, God knew that there was going to be a terrible backlash from King Ahab and that a storm would come from him. He would come out for Elijah's life. So God told Elijah to hide from the storm of Ahab. And, and, and God put Elijah in such a lockdown that there were no human beings around. Instead, he said that birds, he would send birds to feed him. And it's true, but God sent birds in the morning and birds in the evening. Brethren, sometimes you, we find ourselves in a lockdown and we murmur and we complain and we grumble. But I want to encourage somebody here today. If you find yourself in a lockdown, before you begin to murmur and grumble and complain and assume it's the devil, go back to the Lord and find out what he's saying. God was hiding Elijah from danger. He will hide you from danger in the midst of the storm, even if he has to put you in lockdown. Brethren, as the rose of Sharon, we are in a form of lockdown now, but the Lord is hiding us to do a work. 
He is hiding us. There is no coincidence with him. Are you in some sort of lockdown? For some other person individually, it may be that they fall ill and you find yourself not able for a while to do some things because maybe you are not strong for a season. God has put you in a lockdown and during that time, it is good to check with him and to hear his voice. But God will hide you from danger. He will hide you from danger during the storm. Psalm 91 verse 2 says, This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him. The Lord is your refuge and your fortress. He is your hiding place in the face of danger. Brethren, when the storm rages and you are in danger, he will hide you from all manner of danger. When you find yourself in a lockdown situation, know that the Lord will use that lockdown situation to hide you from danger. Know that he will keep you. He is your refuge. He is your place of safety. And even when he hides us, he also uses that time to do awesome things. I will always remember last year when we were in lockdown, he used it to do a new thing in the rose of Sharon. He will use this lockdown also. He will use this hiding to do a new thing in your life and in my life in the name of Jesus. When he hides you in the storm, he hides you from danger. Another thing that God does in the storm, Elijah faced a storm of discouragement and God calmed that storm. Sometimes, brethren, we face the storm of discouragement Perhaps you are here and you are, the storm you are facing is a storm of discouragement. Brethren, discouragement can come like a storm. It can come like a storm. And when discouragement comes, it comes with all the dis with it. It comes with dismay. Oh, it comes with, with heaviness, depression, and so many things. It comes like a storm. But when Elijah faced the storm, God calmed that storm. Perhaps you are facing a storm of discouragement this morning. I come with a word of encouragement to somebody. The story is in 1 Kings 19. I won't read it all, but you can read it at home. Elijah had just killed 400 prophets of Baal. We know the story. It was a mighty victorious battle in 1 Kings 18. Ah, 400 prophets of Baal. He had contended with them and he had decreed that the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And obviously, it was the God of heaven that answered by fire. Subsequently, he killed the 400 prophets of, of Baal. But Jezebel, ha, who was a master Baal worshiper, she threatened to kill him. You will not believe it. Elijah, who had moved with so much power, he was overwhelmed and he was discouraged. Brethren, it is possible for even men and women of God to get to a point where God uses them mightily and then they get discouraged. That is what happened to Elijah. He was overwhelmed and he was discouraged after such a mighty victory. And the Bible says that he ran a day's journey to Beersheba. He ran and sat under a boom tree and he said, God, just take my life. Would you expect that to happen after such a mighty victory? Brethren, the enemy likes to use discouragement, especially after we've had a victory. He likes to do things that will cause discouragement. But the Lord will fight for you in the name of Jesus. 1 Kings 19 verse 4 is the only one we'll read. It says, Elijah himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and he came and sat down under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die. He said, it is enough now, Lord, take my life. I am no better than my father's. But what did the Lord do? Elijah was discouraged. He ran. Can you imagine running for one day? Brethren, if you are afraid of something chasing you, you probably run from here to the gate. God forbid if a dog, just a dog, a big dog is chasing you, you probably run to the gate and jump over the gate, even if you don't run normally. Elijah ran for a whole day. He was running for his life. By the time he got to Beersheba, he was exhausted. Exhausted, physically drained, spiritually discouraged and overwhelmed. And the Lord recognized that Elijah was physically and spiritually exhausted. And so he sent an angel to feed him till he was revived. The Lord did not bash Elijah on the head. He fed Elijah the first time, fed him the second time. And then when Elijah had enough strength, he was able to go to Mount Horeb and meet with God. 
And when he got there, he poured out his heart to the Lord. And God was able to address all his concerns. Brethren, perhaps you are discouraged this morning. Run into the Lord because he's your refuge. And pour your heart out to him. He will answer you. He gave Elijah instructions. Instructions that helped him to refocus and redirect his journey. He provided help for him. And he assured Elijah that Elijah was not the only one. That there were many other prophets of God who had not bowed their knee to Baal. He also told him to appoint Elisha to work for him. Brethren, when you face the storm of weariness and discouragement, the Lord will not bash your face. He will encourage you. He will speak words of comfort and encouragement. He will provide the nourishment that you need to help you, to enable you to continue on the journey. He will speak a word to refocus you, to re-energize you, and to redirect you. Sometimes he allows us to get to a point of discouragement, and then it's because he now wants to stop us and say, my son, my daughter, actually stop there because from now you need to go left, not right, or straight, not right. He will give you a word of encouragement. He will refocus you and redirect you. He will re-energize you in the direction that you should be going to. Brethren, you will come out of the storm stronger and ready to move forward as the Lord leads. But it's important to know the voice of your father in the storm. Isaiah 42 verse 3 says, A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. Perhaps you are bruised as you are going through that storm. He's saying he will not quench that little light. But no, he will encourage you. He will strengthen you. Because he's a loving father who cares for us. The same way he fed Elijah when Elijah was weary and tired. He will feed you and strengthen you. Feed you with his word. Feed you with whatever nourishment you need to be able to get up so that you can continue on that journey that he's leading you. Zephaniah 3.17 says, For the Lord your God is living among you. He's a mighty Savior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. Brethren, he will calm whatever fears. Whatever fears it is you've come in today with, he will calm those fears as you run into him and allow him to be your refuge in the storm. The sixth point he's saying this morning, do not be afraid. You know, when we face storms, the first thing that overwhelms us is fear. Fear tends to paralyze us. And, and the enemy likes to just bring fear over us. The Bible tells us that the disciples were afraid, but Jesus reassured them and told them not to be afraid. He said to them, do not be afraid, it is I. Sometimes, brethren, when we're afraid, we're so paralyzed with fear and anxiety that we're unable to pray. Because fear paralyzes. And that's why it's important for us not to fear. Many times in the word of God, he says to us, fear not, fear not, fear not. Sometimes when you're in that situation, or at all times when you and I are in those situations, we should cry out to our Father. Even if you can't pray, you can carry your tambourine or carry your hands and start to praise God and offer a sacrifice of praise. Psalm 50, 15 says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. I want to encourage somebody this morning when you face a storm and there is fear coming in, cry out to your father. He will deliver you. Isaiah 41 verse 10 in the Amplified verse Version says, Fear not, there is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. He's saying to you that there's no need to be afraid. For what reason? Because he is with you. The almighty God, the God to whom all power belongs is with you. So there's no need for you to be afraid in that storm. No matter what the situation looks like, do not be afraid. The enemy uses fear to paralyze us and to make us unable to move or do anything useful. But the Lord is reassuring you and I this morning, do not be afraid. If you are going through a storm, I pray for you this morning that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guide your heart and mind as you trust in him this morning. And the final point this morning is that when Jesus stepped in the boat with the disciples, the storm ceased. 
He got into the boat and the storm ceased. He spoke in another instance and the storm ceased. When you and I go through storms, he says, we will not drown. The storm will not drown us. Isaiah 43 verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor shall, shall the flame scorch you. Brethren, when Jesus steps into your situation and mine, the storm will cease. Why? Because we will call him into that situation. As you and I will pray this morning. But I want to pray for somebody this morning. Before we, we all together pray about whatever storms we're going through, I want us to know that if we have not accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we cannot even call him into a situation. We cannot even call him to calm the storm. You need to be a member of his family. John 1.12 says, To as many as believed, he gave the power to become the sons of God. And then when you are his child, you can then cry out to him. So I will lead you in a prayer this morning. Perhaps you are watching online and you've never accepted Jesus as Lord. Please pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Father Lord, I pray for everyone who has prayed that prayer this morning. Lord, that you will accept them and that on the last day they will not be found wanting. I pray, Father, Lord, that you yourself will keep them. Your word says you are able to prevent us from sleeping and falling and to present us before your throne in Jesus' name. I want to ask that if you prayed that prayer, look at the numbers on the screen and you may please send a message to any of the numbers. And I would like to say God bless you. That's the most important decision you have made. Now, brethren, we want to, we want to pray. Our Father has shown us this morning we've talked about being in the eye of the storm. Perhaps you are in the eye of the storm. Perhaps you, the storm is raging around you this morning. But the Lord, we have seen that God is the one. Jesus will sometimes lead us into the storm. And the fact that he has led you into the storm does not mean he's not with you. He may have led you in the storm, but he will lead you out of that storm. He's reminded us that his plans for us, they are for good and not for evil, to give us hope and an expected end. He has reminded us that he will not leave us in the storm, but he will come to us. He will not leave us as orphans. He will come to us. But he has also reminded us that he may not come at the time that we expect. You and I may think now, 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 but he may delay a bit, but know that he will not be late. He will calm the storm. He will calm the storm, no matter how severe that storm is, brethren. He will calm the storm. He has also told us this morning that he uses the storms to hide us from danger. So maybe you are going through a storm, perhaps like Elijah. The storm you are going through is like a storm, a lockdown. The Lord will use that lockdown to hide you from danger. He will use that storm also like he did with Elijah. It was a storm of discouragement that he faced. Perhaps you are facing a storm of discouragement this morning. The Lord will, will calm that storm and he will not bash you in the face because he's a gentle God. He will encourage somebody this morning. He will speak a word of peace to your life. And not only that, as he did for Elijah, perhaps you need a refocusing, a, a strengthening. The Lord will encourage you and strengthen you this morning. He will re-energize you and prepare you for the next phase of your life. He is your refuge and he is my refuge. The Lord will see you through that storm that you are facing. And he says to you, to somebody this morning, do not be afraid because he's with you in that storm. Do not be afraid. He says, rather call to me and I will deliver you and you will glorify me. Do not be afraid. Why? Because I am with you in the storm. And as you and I cry out to the Lord this morning, every storm that we are facing will cease in the name of Jesus. So now we want to pray. We have one prayer point. Heavenly Father, please speak 
peace into my situation and calm every storm in my life now in the name of Jesus. Brethren, I don't know what storm. Some people may be facing health storms. Some may be facing financial storms. Some may be facing marital storms. Whatever storms or business storms, whatever storm you are facing this morning, I want you to just go to your father and say, Heavenly Father, please speak peace into my situation and calm the storm in your, my life. If that storm is financial, ask him to calm the financial storm. If it's a health storm, ask him to calm the health storm. L let your prayer be specific this morning. Heavenly Father, we just cry out to you this morning. Speak peace into our situations. Calm every storm that we are facing. For some who are facing physical storms, Father, we pray that you bring healing, that you manifest healing as the balm of Gilead. For some, Lord, who are facing financial storms, Father, calm the storm. Lord, whatever storms your children are facing this morning, Lord, intervene and calm the storms. Thank you, Father, because you are a faithful God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the word. In the eye of the storm, you have shown us, Lord, that even in the eye of the storm, you are there with us. And that storm will not kill us, but instead you will see us. You will join us in the storm. You will calm the storm and you'll be with us. You will speak to us in that storm. Father, Lord, we thank you for your mercy and for your faithfulness. I pray, Lord, for anyone, Lord, under the sound of my voice who is going through a storm. Lord, I pray that you will calm the storms they are going through, whatever type it may be, whether physical, financial, spiritual, whatever storm it may be. Lord, I pray that your peace, which passes all understanding, will intervene. I pray that the balm of Gilead will speak, Lord, in the situations of physical storms. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. I will bring out our offerings unto the Lord. As we remain standing, we worship the Almighty God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give unto you today. We thank you, Lord, for the life that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, for the little that we are bringing out to give unto you. We ask in the name of Jesus that by this offering, every suffering in our life will be terminated in Jesus' name. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.
feet and close in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you, Father God, for the awesome time to come and fellowship at your feet. Father, we thank you for the word that has been shared today. Indeed, every dry bone in our life shall become alive, whether it be financially, whether it be spiritually, whether it be emotionally, health, it shall come alive in Jesus' name. Father, we commit every activities for this week into your hands. We pray, oh, Father God, that your presence will be with us everywhere that we go, oh, God. And every task that we will do, Father God, we shall finish well in Jesus' name. Father, we give you the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's share the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Shalom, and have a blessed week.